Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Power Options, Radioactive Trading, Power Options Applied, Open Discussion, Open Forum presentation for the first Friday of December, December 3rd, 2010. It's good to see you all here today. Thank you for joining me. Before we go into our standard Q&A formats and uh, discuss some of the processes and procedures from this evening, I am going to take about 10 or 15 minutes of your time to just discuss something that's been coming up with a lot of our customers at options, uh, Power Options, I should say, um, over the past few days. As many of you may know, on November 29th, uh, let's see here, let me, oh, I apologize, let me maneuver over here. That's where I wanted to go. On November 29th, Options Express announced that it was going to pay a special dividend of $4.50 per share uh, to shareholders on record as of the 13th of December. Now, uh, this may sound like a good idea. You might think that there are a lot of opportunities where you can use options, for example, uh, to lock in a guaranteed profit and still receive the dividend. Why are you... Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm showing some issues here, and I apologize for that. Let me change that up. One second. I apologize for that. I was showing both screens. Did not mean to. Much better now. We're just showing the one screen. Fantastic. So what I wanted to talk about today is why there is no free money transactions, either using options or using stock positions, when a special dividend is paid. Many of you might know this. Uh, some of you may have questions about it, but we're going to review it. We're going to try to only take up five or ten minutes of our time going over the discussion on the special dividends. Now, as we mentioned, the situation, a stock is going to pay a one-time dividend. might be a very high dividend. Um, could be maybe one-fifth or one-fourth of the current stock price. And the shareholders on record will receive that special dividend, the dividend payment. And there are no free money opportunities. When a special dividend is paid of this type, the stock price is going to be lowered based on the amount of the dividend, and the option prices are going to adjust as well. And the current situation with Options Express, when they announced their dividend on November 29th of $4.50, the stock was trading at about $17.30 at around $17.50. So this is almost one, you know, one quarter, one-fifth of the current stock price. So essentially, this is going to be, this is going to be treated just as a, almost a four-to-one or a five-to-one split uh, on a stock. Now, the specifics of the Options Express dividend. Um, the record date to be on hold, uh, to be on record, excuse me, of owning shares of stock is going to be December 13th. The one-time dividend payment is 450, and the announcement was released on November 29th. When the special dividend is paid, when it's released on the 28th, shares of Options Express are going to adjust. They're going to drop by about 450. Now, the option strike prices are going to adjust as well. So, if you were in a position, a covered call. Married put, collar spread, bear call credit, bull put credit, calendar spread, for example, uh, using the series that are going to be affected by the dividend, the total position value that you had before the dividend is going to equal your total position value after the dividend. Of course, to take advantage of the dividend, you'd probably want to buy shares of stock. But if we're assuming that the stock price is going to lower, everyone knows that the stock price is going to lower by 450. Um, on around December 28th, when the dividend's paid, is this a bearish play? Well, not necessarily. If you short the stock, the stock is going to drop $4.50 from the, uh, you know, wherever you shorted it, but you're going to have to pay the dividend. If you purchase a put option, expecting the put value to increase as the stock drops, the problem here is the put strike is going to adjust. So if I purchased a put option with a 1750 strike, expecting the stock to drop $4.50 in the near future, and I'd have an intrinsic gain of $4.50 on my put, the problem here is that once the dividend is paid, my 1750 strike is going to adjust to a 13 strike. So I don't have the right anymore to force someone to uh, buy shares of stock at 17 and a half. I now have the right to force someone to buy shares of stock at 13. It's mainly going to affect the January 2011 and February 2011 option series. Well, is it a bullish play then? Well, not necessarily. If we purchase the stock, we're going to be able to receive the dividend when it's paid on December 28th, but the stock price is immediately going to drop $4.50 from the price of where it's at on that day. 
Now it can be profitable if we have a lower cost basis than the stock price before the payment date. For example, when the stock, uh, I'm sorry, when Options Express released this announcement on November 29th, the stock was trading at about 1730 at about 1750. It closed today at about $19.09, so it's already moved up 8% from when they announced the dividend, 8.6% roughly. Um, so if the stock price is higher from your purchase price when the dividend is paid, that can still be considered a bullish position. It can still be, it's going to be a profitable position, that's true. But you just have to remember that the cost basis is going to adjust by the dividend amount. Now, of course, if you buy a call, the stock's going to drop, uh, the stock's going to drop in price but the strike price of your call is also going to adjust. Okay, so what's the obvious solution? Well, maybe the obvious solution is a married put position. I buy stock to make sure that I receive the dividend. I have to own stock to receive the dividend. And then I'm going to buy a put to protect against that $4.50 drop in price. Hmm, well, is that going to work? Well, no, because we are going to own the stock. We are going to receive the dividend but the put strike price is going to adjust at that point as well. So the market value of my position before the dividend is going to equal the market value after the dividend as well. Let's take a look at a quick example here. The closing prices as of 12-3, uh, as of today, 12-3-2010, I could theoretically go out, buy shares of stock at Options Express for 1909 and buy a January 2011 20 put for about $1.45. So my total investment into the position stock plus put would be $20.54. My guaranteed exit price is $20. I'm able to sell or close my shares of stock at $20 by the insurance policy of the put, so I'm only risking $0.54 cents or 2.3% of the total position. Now what is the expectation? Well, I've purchased stock, so I'm going to receive the dividend. I bought this put. So I'm going to be able to sell to close my shares of stock at $20 after the dividend is paid. I collect $450, stock drops to $1459, and I sell the stock at $20. Well, that's not correct, because as soon as I receive that $4.50 dividend, my 20 strike put is going to adjust to a $15.50 strike on December 28th. The purchase price is still $1.45 for the put, so I still have $1.45 plus my original cost basis into the position. Now what we'd be looking at is stock at about $14.59 and a strike price of $15.50. So remember the original position cost would be $20.54. After the dividend was paid, what we would see is we'd have long shares of stock trading at $14.59. We did have $1.45 for the purchase price of the put. So total adjusted stock price where it's trading right now plus my price for the put is $16.04. Now, instead of having a 20 strike, we have a 1550 strike. So our new total at risk is 54 cents. It's the same as it was before. It's the 1604 value minus 1550. Of course, now the value of the position, we have this stock, and we, I'm sorry, we have the stock roughly at 1459. We paid $1.45 for the put. So our new accounting would have us with a cost basis of 1604, and we received the $4.50 dividend. So we still have a market value of roughly twenty fifty four. Now, the trick here is, of course, the put might not be priced at $1.45. We might not be able to liquidate that put for $1.45 as some of the time value would have decayed out of it. Okay, so that's kind of a trick there, too. All right? But the market value stays the same. Once the dividend is paid, it's, it's going to be treated just as uh, one of those ratio splits, for example. The strike prices are going to adjust. And uh, if you have a call or if you have a put, and the stock's going to lower as well. Now, for the January and February 2011 calls and puts on OXPS after the dividends paid on 1228, here's what we'll see. Um, the existing strike right now, the 1250 call, the 1250 put, is going to adjust to an $8 strike. The $15 strike on the February January call or put will be adjusted to the 1050. The 17 and a half strike will adjust to a 13. The 20 strike will adjust to a 1550 and the 22 and a half will adjust to an 18 strike. I think there are also some far out June options. I have an expiration of 6 18 2011 uh, that will also be adjusted as well. Now, this is not a recommendation, a warning, or advice to buy or not buy, to invest in or not to invest in Options Express before or after the special dividend. We just want to make you aware 
that the options are going to adjust as well. There's no free money opportunities. Um, so, you know, if you're buying a put expecting the stock to drop, your rights and requirements, let's say, of selling that stock or uh, having a 20-strike put after the dividend is paid is going to adjust down to uh, the 1350, I'm sorry, the uh, 1550 strike put. So it's going to adjust with the stock. So we're not making any recommendations. Um, we want you to do your own research and analysis, decide if options expressed in the special dividend is the right way for you to invest or not to invest. But for all the questions that we had during this week, we just wanted to touch upon the idea that you can't use the options to manipulate this because they're going to be adjusting in strike prices and their uh, requirements and obligations as well. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to spend 10 minutes on that to clear that up um, in case anyone had any questions. If you already knew this and you didn't have any questions, well, just a little review for you. Let us move on now back to our normal presentation, which you uh, all, of course, came here for. Let me just make sure I've got the right screen up, and there we go. Okay, so my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. Um, I've been with Power Options for eight years. I uh, handle a lot of the coaching sessions in education. I've co-authored two books with Ernie, and I am versed in all 23 different strategies that we have available on Power Options. Now, the processes and procedures for the rest of today's Q&A open forum, open discussion presentation. So I want you to use the question pod uh, to pose a question you might have about options, um, option strategies, using the Power Options tools, uh, using some of the different strategies or techniques that uh, we offer and we educate as well. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. We may not have time to answer all of the questions, uh, but we've, um, we're going to stay and make sure that we get through all of them as best we can. Questions, of course, can be about the tools and power options, uh, the radioactive trading techniques, power options applied, general options strategy, general options education, general market questions as well. Feel free to ask anything that's uh, on your mind. Now, just have some basic ground rules. We've never had a problem with this before, but we always like to mention it. We just ask that you have respect for all attendees and presenters. Um, if there's consistent negative behavior, it will not be tolerated, and uh, you'll be asked to leave. But I just have that in there as a disclaimer. We've never had that problem before. Please be patient. There may be a couple questions ahead of yours, um, so I'm going to try to answer all the questions, as I mentioned. Uh, and feel free, please, feel free to help us help others. Um, if I'm answering a question, someone asks a question about a covered call or a specific strategy, and uh, I'm answering the question based on my market experience, but your market experience is entirely different, I'd love for you to use the question pod and share that with me, and then I'll share it with the rest of the group as well. Uh, so feel free to help me help everyone else online. Most important, hey, it's Friday. It's the first Friday of December, getting close to the uh, Christmas holidays, the New Year's holidays. So let's just have some fun, get some good education in today and then start off on the right foot to enjoy the rest of our weekend. All right, I'm going to navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. I'll go ahead and ask everyone to start queuing up your questions that you might have. Um, let's see here, regarding, of course, the Power Options or the Power Options suite of tools. For those of you that are just starting off, perhaps, on a 14-day free trial, um, I just want to remind you that you can follow these four steps to get better acquainted with the tools on the site and on Power Options as well. Uh, flash tutorials, the live webinars we host during the week, of course, and the individual coaching session. Uh, tr any trial member or subscriber can sign up for uh, the free individual coaching sessions. You can have as many as you want. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we don't charge for those. And there's also a wealth of information available in the Learning Center for different, if you go into the Learning Center, excuse me, underneath the main home tab, um, archived tip sheets, flash tutorials, archived webinars, there's a variety of those there, um, options education links, of course, and general market activity information. All right, let's see here. Got a couple questions coming in. It looks like this is from Wayne. I talked to Wayne earlier. Um, Okay, I'm sorry, let's just see here. Ah. Okay, I'm sorry, Wayne, I just wanted to make sure I understood your question. Wayne has uh, just started out with Power Options, and uh, as many of you know, we have a portfolio tool which tracks your open positions. And rather than entering them all in manually right now, Wayne would like to be able to import his existing portfolio into the Power Options tools um, to start tracking them with Power Options and using... Um, excuse me, using the uh, position analysis screen to analyze potential rollout opportunities. 
Now, Wayne, we have our programmers looking into this um, on, into a way that you might be able to reverse export it, uh, for example. There isn't a way right now to import your portfolio directly, your existing positions directly into the Power Options portfolio tool. So right now they still have to be entered manually. Um, in the past, Greg and I have uh, helped new users enter those in, so you don't have to do them all by yourself. Um, once or some of those positions in for you so that you can start tracking them. But right now, Wayne, we do not have a direct import. Uh, the programmers, Ernie and myself, are looking at um, evaluating, I don't want to say evaluating, that's the wrong word, <laughs> enhancing the portfolio tools in the next couple of months. So we'll probably have a release in the near future um, where we'll have a lot of enhancements in the portfolio, including easy ways to import or export um, from different Excel spreadsheets, perhaps, into the portfolio tool. All right, let's see here. Greg wants to know, can portfolio data be imported into the power from a broker or data file instead of manual? Um, Greg has the same question. <laughs> um, Greg, that's essentially the same question. Right now, there's a, not a direct import um, into, I'm sorry, there's not a direct import in the Power Options tools from a broker or a data file. Again, the programmers are working on something. It's going to have to be done most likely through Excel or through some other form, maybe quick and even. Um, the reason why is that every we can't go directly from broker to broker simply because every broker has their own different version of uh, how they track the positions and what columns that they use. While well, I'm talking, let me just navigate over to the profit and loss portfolio here into the portfolio tools. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, so we are going to work on that, Greg, but we just don't have one available right now. And Greg also wants to know is when I'm tracking positions or I'm in the main search tool, for example, um, I can use the more information buttons to go ahead and link to uh, the broker link, for example. Let's see here. Oh, there's an open position. I apologize. And the broker link, which allows me to uh, close the position, close the leg. Right now, the broker link is only available through Options Express and Brokers Express. Um, we don't have any other brokers available with the broker link at this time. Um, we, <laughs> we were in discussion with Thinkorswim before they got bought out by Ameritrade. Um, we were looking at some of those val uh, potentials there, excuse me, of linking to Thinkorswim. Um, but that all kind of stopped once TD Ameritrade went in and bought out uh, Thinkorswim. But uh, if there's a specific broker, Greg, that you would like to use, or you would like to see in the broker link, um, a broker that you're using and you have a contact with your broker, um, you may just want to contact them and say it'd be really convenient. You have the suite of tools that you use for your options, research, and analysis. And uh, just tell them that you might like to see it linked there and that might get the conversation rolling. Um, or if you have some contact information, we might take a look at that and we'll uh, try to contact them and see if we can work with uh, a broker that you suggest or um, a broker that you're currently using right now. All right, let's see here. Okay. All right, question, is there a tool for providing a list of dividend-paying stocks and how much monetary value the dividend is? And this is possible, how do we sort for that? In the main search tools, Wayne, we don't show the monetary amount for the dividend. We show the percentage annual dividend. We don't have a specific stock list of dividend-paying stocks, but Let's say, for example, Wayne, you were interested in doing positions, uh, let's just say covered call positions, for example, on dividend paying stocks. Well, I would just go into my search menu here, go into the covered call menu, and we'll go into search. And we have our okay, default criteria here. So I scroll down, and we're just taking a look at the initial values uh, default covered call screen. Now, what you'd want to do is keep your same criteria. You, you can create a screen just to look for uh, any stock that pays a dividend. And I'll show you how to do that. But what I'd want to do is put in my criteria that I'm looking for in the strategy. If you're doing covered calls, married puts, um, if you're doing just uh, you know other kinds of positions, uh, collars where you're long stock, for example, and you want to uh, include the dividend with your other criteria, you just use the percent dividend yield, of course, and we'll just put in our minimum requirements in the parameter field. So let's say I only want to see stocks that match my other, call, other covered call criteria that pay at least a 3% annual dividend. All right, so we'll just add that in and we'll go ahead and click Submit These Settings. 
And now I see I've narrowed my list down to uh, only about nine stocks that match those other covered call requirements, um, but still have at least a 3% dividend annualized, annualized dividend. Now, I don't see the column here for the annualized dividend, so I can just go to see more or less columns. This will take us to the configuration page. And I'll select percent dividend yield. And for my stock information, the available data I can see for the stock and over on the right is the option information. I'll select that dividend yield and then we'll go ahead and click on save and return. It'll just ask us to refresh the page to reload the data. And now the percent dividend yield. Um, I have TAL which pays a 5.4 percent annualized dividend. Footlocker pays a 3 percent. CTC 5.4. Um, Tech Stainer Group Holdings 3.7% and so forth. Mattel, of course, at 3.2. Uh, now that's that matched the other criteria already because I still, if I'm doing a covered call search and I want to include dividends, I'm still going to want to use the other criteria. I want to look for stocks in an uptrend that match my fundamental criteria, my minimum percentage return. Now, if you just wanted to create your own list or view which stocks across the entire universe of options paid at least, let's say, a 3% dividend, what I would do is scroll down to the very bottom of the search menu and I'm going to hit clear these settings. That's going to empty everything out of the parameter field. Now I'm going to select the next available month which is December but at the same time I'm going to use a days to expiration of greater than eight. I, should, I could use greater than seven. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to filter out the weekly options. I'm using the covered call screen now, Wayne, as a stock screen. So what I'm going to do is limit the range out of the money, my number of strikes, to be just between one to one. I'm doing this because I only want to see one possible strike for every stock. I know Mattel, as we saw before, pays a 3.2% dividend, but if I just left it open and screened for stocks that pay that 3.2% dividend, I'd have all maybe 15 or 20 strikes for December for Mattel, and that's too much to go through. So, okay, we have no other criteria. We're only looking for one strike. I'm looking in the month of December, but I forced the days to expiration to be greater than eight because I don't want to see duplicates with the weekly options that are available. And then let's say we only want to see those stocks that paid a minimum annualized dividend of at least 4%. So I'll just plug that in, and let's click Submit These Settings. Now, I still have all the data here um, for the uh, different... Um, other criteria I selected, stock symbol, expiration, net debit, uh, percent if assigned, downside protection. I see here that there's a lot of these that are have no option bid, that they haven't been trading. Well, let's go ahead. Well, I can leave that in there. But so now we kind of have a list. It shows us about 328 positions that have a dividend of greater than 4%. Um, now, we could choose to sort it by percent dividend yield as well. If I wanted to sort from highest to lowest, Let's just go back into the parameter field in the sort results table by I'll select percent dividend. Let's see. Ah, percent yield. I apologize. It's by the percent yield. And I'm sorting from highest to lowest here with the radio button. So let's just click submit there. And no surprise, we see AGNC, CIM, NLY is a popular favorite um, that uh, I've been receiving calls about. Annaly Mortgage with a 14.9% dividend. What's sort of the problem with a stock that pays a 14.9% dividend? Well, there's not a lot of call premium available on those options because the stock doesn't have a tendency to move very much. <laughs> so you can have it for the 14% dividends, but you're not going to be able to generate a lot of premium off of it uh, because the call premiums are so low due to the low volatility as well. Okay, let's see here. Um, now, what I just showed, what we just showed for the percent dividend yield goes essentially for anything else too, any of the other filters as well. What if you only wanted to see those stocks that had a beta of greater than 1.5? You just wanted a wider stock list. Um, you know, stocks that had a beta of greater than 1.5, or more restrictive, let's just say between 1.5 and 2%. I could just put that in and see if there are any stocks. Okay, how many stocks did we get here that have that? It should be a fair amount. 151. There's 151 optionable stocks that have a beta between 1.5 and 2. Um, let's say if we only wanted to look for just a basic, uh, the basic stocks, how many stocks are out there that had... Um, a certain implied volatility range. I'm sorry, I should have said historical volatility range. Um, 
for example, or certain price earnings. You can just do those one at a time. All right. Greg, is there, Greg wants to know, is there a way to display more than 20 results at a time? Yes and no. Um, we limit this down to 20 results, and the reason why we do that is because we feel to use this tool correctly, when you put in your criteria of what you want to see in a given strategy, you should probably have the limited results down to maybe only 15, 20, maybe 30 results as it is. You, know, you want to use as much of the criteria as you can without filtering out too many results. Now on the search results itself, Greg, you won't be able to, there's no way that I can select to see more results. However, if you click on printer friendly version there up at the top of the results, it'll give you the listing there um, of I think essentially all of the ones that match it up to 150 um, or maybe 200 results. So you can always use the printer friendly version if you just wanted to see more results than the 20 that are shown. And it's still sorting it by how I had it selected um, by the percent dividend yield in this case because we changed those results. Now, Greg's other question, is there a way to export search results to a spreadsheet for further manipulation? No, we do not have a direct export from the search results into Excel. There are a variety of specific reasons for that. Number one, we do realize that everyone might want to use their Excel spreadsheets to do their different calculations or to add the different columns together. But we're really flexible. If you have a suggestion of a column you'd like to see or data you'd like to see or um, a combined ratio of two columns that currently isn't on power options, send us an email or give us a call and we'll try to implement that into the strategy and into the results table for you. The other reason we don't have a direct export to Excel is because in the early days, uh, before I was here, uh, there were some security issues where uh, people were stealing certain sets of search results putting them into an Excel spreadsheet and then reselling them as their own data. Um, so that's, that's some of the reasons why we don't have Excel. If you have an idea of a data column you'd like to see, Greg, that you use in your um, Excel spreadsheet, or if there's a couple columns you'd like to see that you use for a ratio um, that you would like to see on Power Options, just send us an email and we'll see if we can implement that for you. In the past, Greg, I have heard of uh, customers, for example, let's see here, which you might be able to do. Um, some customers have been able to just to copy and paste certain rows here um, from the smart search results and then paste it into Excel. I think you might have more luck trying to copy and paste the columns here, perhaps in the printer friendly version of your results that you have more of there to import them into the columns. Um, so that's just, uh, there isn't a direct one, a direct import export in the portfolio or from the main search results. Um, but there are some ways around it that you might be able to locate and you might, uh, I'm sorry, you might uh, be able to use that printer friendly version to do that more effectively as well. Okay, let's see here. While we're on this page and I had cleared out all the settings and uh, we looked up the just the stocks that paid a dividend and how to manipulate it just to look at uh, other values as well. Um, there's been a lot of talk recently, and there's been a lot of discussion recently, of course, on the weekly options. They started having weekly options on stocks back in uh, June, I think it was, end of May, beginning of June. Um, so now the expiration date is every seven days. If you're looking for, in this case, well, we're in the covered call screen, if I'm looking for covered call opportunities on the weekly options, well, I'd start off the same way we did before. Um, we'll scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Remember? and we'll click clear these settings. We'll empty out all of the filters. Scroll back up to the top. Uh, let's just go to percent uh, return if assigned here rather than the percent yield. Let's change how we're sorting our results. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna leave it in December, but instead of seeing the regular monthly options for December, if I just wanna see the weeklies, I'm gonna put in my days to expiration to be between zero and uh, eight. I suppose I could put in seven, but I'll just put in zero to eight. And then I can put in my other criteria as well. I want to make sure, now you have to take some things with a grain of salt. <laughs> if you usually expect on an average basis to make, let's say, two to two and a half percent on your standard covered call positions um, using the regular monthly options, you have to narrow your expectations down by maybe a factor of a third or a fourth if you're trading the weekly options. Now, your annualized return, if you're able to go week by week by week, your annualized return for those call selling is going to be higher than by going month by month by month, of course. But the static return 
we have to, we're not, I'm not going to search for a position that has a 5% downside protection and a 3% return if assigned for the weekly options. I could find positions that have that, that that's probably on the ultra short or the three times bear or the three times bull ETFs that offer weekly options. So let's just, let's just try some. Let's look for a minimum percent if assigned of 0.5%. Uh, minimum downside protection of the same, 0.5%. Um, net credit, or I'm sorry, let's see here. Where's my option premium? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, option bid price, I apologize. I'm going to put something basic in there, at least 25 cents. And that's just to make sure that uh, if there is something out there that has 25 cents, that'll cover my uh, commissions, uh, depending on how many shares I was going to do. Now, I'm not going to put in any other stock criteria. And the reason why, there's as much conversation as there has been recently on the weekly options and using the weekly options for these different strategies. I want everyone to keep in mind that uh, as of last count, where is my list? I believe there is a total of about 32, 33 indexes, ETFs, and stocks that have weekly options. Um, the new stocks that have weekly options, I think there's only 17. So there's a low number of stocks that offer the weekly options. So I don't need to put in a lot of things for the stock price, earnings per share growth, price per earnings, fundamental and technical criteria. It's already dealing with a limited universe of options anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and click submit these settings. Now I'm going to have possibly more than 35 results because there are more, yeah, there's about 56 results. And I said there's only 34. Mm indexes, ETFs, and stocks that have weekly options. But I have some duplicates here, don't I? Um, here's the December 42 strike on VXX, and then I also have the 44 and the 45. Those matched my basic criteria. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, George, or I'm sorry, Greg asked another question. Can search results be changed to allow display of results either ascending or descending? Yes. Um, earlier, we had changed the sorting results from percent if assigned to percent yield. Underneath the day's expiration, you have two fields here in all the smart searches. Uh, it's just two simple radio buttons where you can select to view the, um, the order of your results uh, from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. In this case, we sorted our results by percent return if assigned. So I scroll back up. We see we start off with a... 10% potential return on the VXX, the out of deep out of the money 45 call, which is selling for 45, 40 cents premium. Now, if I change my order, I'll just click the radio button there to order results lowest to highest and hit submit. I still have the same 56 results as we had before. We're showing the first 20 of 56 results, but now I'm sorting by the uh, lowest return if assigned to highest. Now. What I also probably changed is the probability. I probably flipped the probability, so I expect to see higher probabilities of assignment now, 83%, 62.4%, uh, and so on. So whatever criteria you select, Greg, to sort the results table by from that drop-down menu, uh, you can choose using those simple radio buttons to do if you want to order them from highest to lowest, or rather if you wanted to order them from lowest to highest. Now, one thing that I always want to mention, if you decide to run a search in a, let's say, a, uh, an income generating strategy. Covered calls, naked puts, bear call credits, bull put credits, for example, even the debit spreads. If you're comparing both weekly and the regular uh, Third Friday expiration series, what you're going to want to do, depending, I'm sorry, in, every, in any strategy you're in, if I'm in covered calls, for example, in addition to looking at the static percent if assigned, I'm also probably going to want to look at the percent if assigned annual, because that's more of a comparison of apples to apples, for example. Um, it's going to be hard for me to compare the static return of an option that expires in seven days versus one that expires in three weeks, or in this case, in 15 days for the December series. Um, so you always want to use the annualized return when you're comparing uh, the weekly options to the monthlies, or if you're comparing the different monthly options. If you're looking for a search, for example, on a strategy, uh, an income strategy, such as covered calls, if I'm looking at a range of expiration between 0 and 90 days, so I'd look at the current month, the next month out, and three months out in time, I want to use the percent if assigned annualized return and the percent downside protection annualized, even maybe the percent if unchanged annualized return, so I'm actually having a more fair comparison between the positions. 
So that's just, you remember, anything that you can basically sort by and filter by down in the search tool, you can choose to view uh, by selecting those values in the see more or less columns. Okay. Hmm. So again, this is just our search results for those weekly options. Um, we can change the sorting again. Um, now, what I want to do is let's just look at a quick list of the stocks that have a weekly option. Now, to do that, we're going to start off where we had. We're going to look at our time frame of zero to eight days. I'm going to remove all of these stock filters or all these option filters. Again, the minimum percent return of sign, minimum downside protection. I'm just going to put in number of strikes, limit it from one to one. Now, if I just wanted to see stocks, what I'll do, because there are indexes, ETFs, for example, that have weeklies, down at the bottom where I can select to view specific stock lists, such as the IBD 100, CanSlim list, or indexes, ETFs, and holders, what I'm going to do is leave it at no list, so I'm screening across the universe of options, but in my remove stock list fields, the one at the bottom, I'm going to select to remove indexes, ETFs, and holders, and I use the strike of one to one, just so I only get one strike for each stock that has a weekly option. Let's just go ahead and run that search. Might have changed, but let's see. Uh, no, VXX still came up as an ETN, not an ETF. That's why it's there. Okay, so now I'm showing there are some duplicates here. Oh, that series is still in. That, that last series doesn't expire until... The, the Friday option series today, technically it doesn't expire until 10 p.m. tonight. So let me just change that and go 1 to 8. There we go. All right, so here's a list of our basically, it looks like 20 stocks minus the ETN, so that would be 19. Um, Potash, Apple, Google, Intel, GE, General Motors, BP, Ford, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Priceline, Bank of America, IBM, Amazon, Las Vegas, Sands, Microsoft, Netflix, RIM, and Cisco Systems. I think that I do have a new one in here that I was not aware of, and I think it's GM. I'm just going to compare it quickly to my old list that I ran the other day. I bet you... I think that's it. I think GM is a new series. I want to check that on the option chain very quickly. So for my search results, I'm going to go to the option chain for GM. And that's interesting, isn't it? On the chain, it's showing me the different symbols. But as we saw with uh, some of the other weekly stocks, for example, um, let's go back to Apple. No, let's not use Apple. Let's go to Intel, INTC. Right. Let's see, let's go ahead and submit that. Mm. So the options that it technically expire today but will get fulfilled in the next uh, few hours, those one-day series are still there for Intel, and the seven-day series are as well. But for GM, all right, it looks like this doesn't have a series for today. It's not that they've already expired. It didn't exist. So yesterday was the first time that weekly options were included for GM, and there's the first series. So that's kind of interesting. So we have a new stock now with weekly options, and it is General Motors. All right, let's see here. This is uh, was Greg again. Let's see, Greg, let's see, what is... I, no, oh, that's why. Okay, I was mixing it with another question. I apologize, Greg. Now I see your question. Can you search by specific strike prices instead of range in or out of the money or number of strikes? For example, I'm looking at calendar calls, and I want my long call to be between 15 and 20. Can I enter that specific range without having to calculate percents in or out of the money? I don't think so. Um, let me go. Okay, we're in the, let me go back to the covered call screen, Greg, and I just want to check something here. I remember something a while ago. Maybe it wasn't in this search. Maybe it was in one of the other ones. Um, but I thought there was a strike price screen either here or maybe in Naked Puts, for example. But I'm almost positive in the in the calendar spreads. Oh, don't have it available there. Let me go into calendar spreads. Uh, clear out that, and let me add calendar calls, for example. Yeah, so I'm in the other strategies menu, and I'm just customizing. Um, my view, so I'm going to add calendar call there into tab number seven. Click save. Okay, so now I've got calendar calls there. 
Let me go to search. Yeah, I'm almost positive you can't do it by direct strike price, Greg. I've actually never had that question come up before. Um, how would I do this? Let's see. Let me think for a minute to figure out how I would do this. Bid price and the ask price. Sell implied volatility, black shoals. What would I do? I guess I would right now, I know, as I mentioned, we don't have the specific strike price screen. You can either do it by number of strikes in or out of the money or by the percentage. Uh, there's not a direct selection for strike price. Um, when, when you're doing these, these calendar spreads, Greg, are you using horizontals or diagonals? In other words, if you're looking for the long call to be between 15 and 20, um, are you selling a uh, 22 and a half or a 25, a higher strike short call um, against that? Okay, looks like you are. All right. What I might try to manipulate in that case, um, I can talk to the programmers, and I, I can easily talk to the programmers after the presentation, or we can talk next week. I think uh, one of the programmers might actually be gone for the day. Um, but what I can look to do is see if we can have that included, a strike price selection included for you in the search tool, Greg. Um, but for now, I think what you might have to do is try to manipulate the stock price range um, to find your long call first. So maybe look for a stock price range, let's say between, or f between 15 to 20. I don't know if that would work too well, and then use one of the percent ranges in or out of the money. So um, I'll take a look at that. I'll talk to the programmers, Greg, and see if I can get at that added. Um, and I'll let you know on Monday, um, or maybe even this afternoon, if I uh, get a chance to talk to them before they uh, take off for the day. Um, so right now, there is no way to do that. And I think it can be done. Let me just check something very quickly. I'm going to go back into that other strategies menu. I'm going to pick a different strategy here. I want to take a quick look. Let me remove condors and bull put credits. I want to take a quick look at long straddle and uh, why not short strangle for the moment. Let me just look. I want to look at these two search fields for a second. Because I thought there was a field that we had. See, this one allows you to look for the strike under, number of strike under. It's very similar, but it doesn't have a specific strike. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I can get that added for you, Greg, in the calendar calls and calendar puts, because we do have a static strike price filter um, that's listed for the straddles and strangles. So I should be able to get that over into the calendar spreads as well. But I knew I wasn't joking myself. I knew I'd seen the strike price search somewhere. I just don't use long straddles and long strangles that often anymore. All right. Let's see here. All right, Greg. Yeah, I'll see what we can do with that. Um, oh, Greg, the sound cut out. Uh, is anyone still able to hear me? Greg says that he uh, his sound cut out on him there for a little bit. So I'm not sure if everyone heard that. Wayne wants to know, um, this is a little bit harder for me to show. Um, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to do something very quickly. Let me try, oh, here we go. I know what I'm going to do. Let me do this real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Just give me half a second. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to do something very quickly here. All right, fantastic. There's our screen again. Sorry about that. Now what I wanted to do is I've had a problem with this in the past. I'm going to actually change my screen view. Let me go to here. Okay. What well, Wayne wanted to know, and this is back in the option chain that we were looking at earlier, Wayne wanted to know, do each of the parameters on the criteria page have a definition, such as a pop-up when you hover over to a different page? Yes, every one of those should. And what uh, Wayne is inquiring about here, let's go back in that covered call screen we had before in the covered call search. Hmm. So the new columns I added, if I hover over open interest, for example, in the column field, uh, we should get a pop-up definition. I'm sorry, just navigated away. From, there you go. Okay, so we had little pop-up definition, current option volume, for example, um, and so forth. And in addition to that, all the filters down below uh, should also have um, a pop-up definition. So previous option volume, uh, percentage stock volume. All of them should have a pop-up definition. You just have to make sure that you have pop-ups enabled. And of course, if you click on that link, um, 
uh, if you click on that link there, I'm sorry, if I click directly on, let's say, uh, price to book, for example, it should take me right to the glossary, um, and then I can just scroll through and find the filter. A lot of them should be tagged. That one should have been tagged. I apologize for that. That's something I'll look at. Most of them are tagged, by the way. So if I click on percent if assigned, it'll take me right into the tag field there for the percent if assigned and percent if assigned annual, for example. Okay? All right. And, of course, if you do come across something, um, uh, hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Let's give me one second. If you do come across something, Wayne, that you're screening for and, and it doesn't have a pop-up definition or something comes up and it doesn't make sense, just let me know and I'll try to uh, change that for you, get a better description in there and make sure there's a description for you. All right, real quick, I'm going to switch over to the screen and make sure I've got screen two selected now instead of screen one. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. There we go. Excellent. All right. Uh, one moment, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you have questions, keep sending them in. I'm just going to reply to Greg real quick. Okay. Uh, Greg, okay, right now, Greg, I guess you have sound back, or I hope you do. <laughs> Just ask, can more than eight strategies uh, be displayed at one time? No, um, we're, we're just showing the eight strategies at a time. I think it would be very time consuming. I understand why you'd want to have different ones so you can just go in and do different screens. But um, right now we only allow eight. I, I don't know about your personal trading, Greg. Right now I think the most strategies I trade at one time is five. I have five different strategies at one time. Sometimes in a, if the market suddenly shifts and we see a sudden decline or we see a sudden uh, large gap up or large run up, I might have as many as seven different strategies going at once. Um, collar spreads, protected spreads, for example, plus some uh, maybe long calls positions and maybe some uh, calendar spreads as well. Uh, but in the down market or a neutral market, I'm usually trading about four or five different strategies. Really, I'll say in a neutral market, I'm only trading two or three. Um, at a time. Oh, okay, great, great. You got that back up on the computer. Uh, so we only have, when you go into the other strategies there, you only have those eight selections. You can, of course, remove the custom spreads, um, and that allow you to have eight full strategies. I usually have seven and the custom spreads there, so I can always go into the custom spread and just build a strategy from scratch and see if I like the uh, risk-reward ratio, total premium, um, and potential loss, for example. Um, we do have a little bit of real estate there, but it's, uh, yeah, right now we're only just going to allow those eight tabs there. Just out of curiosity, Greg, how many strategies do you research or trade at one time? And I won't share it with the group if, if you don't want me to. I'm just curious. <clears throat> I remember at one time I had a customer who was essentially doing, I, I logged on to his portfolio during a coaching session. And I, I, I couldn't make heads or tails. I think he had a total of 87 positions in four different portfolios across 12 different strategies. And uh, that was enough to almost make my head explode at first because <laughs> he wanted to go through uh, a good portion of his positions during the coaching session to just talk about some of the risk reward. It took me a while to go through all of that. Let's see here. All right. Do we have any other questions coming in? Okay. Um, yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, I understand what you mean, Greg. Um, Greg replied back and says he agrees with limited number of strategies, but sometimes likes to play around with others just to see if anything looks like uh, something you might want to use now or in the future. And I do that too. Occasionally, um, what I'll do is I'll have uh, during a trading cycle and. Uh, let's say that uh, after December expiration, coming up I'll enter new positions for maybe January, February expiration, or maybe some longer term married puts for example. And once I have all my positions in play that I'm using for that month, collars, I have a couple collars open, maybe some naked puts, or maybe a calendar spread or two, um, married puts of course, um, what I'll do is I'll go into the other strategies and I might just remove all of the ones that I'm actually currently trading if I'm not planning on opening any new positions in the next three or four days, and just add in the other strategies I wanted to play around with. So I'll have a day or two or three-day time period where I'm actually just researching new strategies as opposed to actually trading. I'll still monitor my open trades with the portfolio, for example. That's just something I, uh, I play around with from time to time. I've wanted to do iron condors or uh, the covered combinations, for example. I haven't done one of those in a while. Um, 
And of course, if you have a question on, and this just goes for anyone online, if you have a question about a specific strategy, you don't know what it is, for example, covered combination, you can always uh, add it to your menu. And if you go to the main homepage, you'll have a basic overview, of course. And you can always link to the strategy help page for the specific strategy to get more information there on the particular technique. Hmm. All right, well, it's about 520. Um, let's see, what did we cover today? We talked about the weekly options and identifying those. We talked about screening just for dividends. And we talked about, of course, at the beginning, the 10-minute little light presentation on special dividends. Um, Oh, Todd. Okay, great question, Todd. Uh, let's go back into, let me, let me change up my strategies again. Let me go back to the default strategies to answer this question. Okay, there we go. Great. I'm going to just go back into the covered call search for now. Todd asks a very good question. Is there any way to screen for stocks above 52 week highs or big movers that are optional or point gainers? Yes, yes, and no. <laughs> let, me, let me show you what I mean by that. Now, one of the fields that we have, Todd, that you can filter by is the percent of 52-week range. Okay, So let's just go from scratch again, and let's scroll down to the bottom and hit Clear Our Settings. We'll keep in the January expiration cycle, but I'm going to empty all the filters out. I'm going to use that basic restriction of just the one strike, uh, between one to one strikes at or out of the money. And here's our percent of 52-week range. So if I wanted to look for stocks that are in the lower, let's say, 20 percentile of the 52-week range, I just put in a range of blank to 20. However, if I wanted to look for stocks that are in the upper 80 percentile, 80 percent or higher of the 52-week range, we'll just put in 80 to blank, greater than 80 percent. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's look for anything that's above 99, 99 percentile of the percent 52-week range. Let's see what we have there. Hmm. Got some good stocks there, 431. All right, well, let me check something here. What I want to do is go into that See More or Less Columns button again, and I'm sorting by percent of 52-week range. Well, there's the total of the one-year range, but I want the percentage. There it is, percent of range, and I selected just the one-year range itself, so let's click Save and Return and close the window. All right, so let's take a look at the first one there. Audio codes, AUDC, currently it closed today at 556. Percent of range is 102. The one-year total range is 231 to 550. Uh, this one here is right at 100. It looks like it closed. The second one, Nova Measuring Instruments, closed at 764. Between C, set, ugh, one year range of 363 to 766. March X, 792. 107% of its range from 363 to 765. So yes, you can do it by 52-week highs, uh, screening specifically for stocks that have a greater than 100% of their 52-week high, for example. Now, stock change today. You asked about, or big movers that are optionable or point gainers, okay? Also in the stock selection field, you can screen by monetary stock change today. So let me go ahead and just clear Ah, hold on one second. Let's clear out all the drawings first. I'm going to clear out my percent of 52-week range filter. And let me screen just now by the stock change today. And let's say I only wanted to see stocks that moved up at least $5. Okay, let's see if there's anything out there. You might see some high-priced stocks. There we go. ProShares Ultra Silver ETF. That's no surprise. Up $6.60. Um, Blue Nile. Um, Decker's Outdoor Corporation up 508 and Priceline up 1112. Okay, well that's neat, but you know a lot of higher price stocks to see the moves. What if I want to see a percentage mover? Well, instead of using the monetary stock change today, let's go ahead and look for a percentage stock change today greater than I don't know. Let's have fun. 15%. What moved more than 15% today of its open price? Do we have anything? Ah, Build a Bear up a dollar 95 to 7.91. I don't even want to know what this AMBEC position is at 14 cents. Let's just ignore that entirely. Uh, Gentex Corp um, up 406, and Kirkland's up a dollar 89 to 13.89. Now, as far as options go, we don't have a filter for change in option price, but we do show a field that you can use 
for percent current option volume. In other words, to search specifically um, for stocks whose option volume has gained over 150 or over 200 percent, where their current option volume is 200 percent higher than, let's say, their average over the last 90 days. Let's go ahead and take a look. Is there anything there that has a 200 percent current option volume? Let's take a look. Oh, we've got, some, we've got a lot of them. Fuel cell energy, low price, a lot of low price stocks, of course. And you have to take some of this with a grain of salt because if the average volume, the average option volume is very small in these positions, then that's not going to, it doesn't take a lot for it to have a good current volume. So let's say we only wanted to see stocks that traded at least 200 contracts today, had a percent current option volume greater than 200. And let's say they have, an, have to have an open interest of at least 500. We'll still see some of those low price stocks. We'll filter a lot of them out as well. Oh, Diana Shipping. Okay, there's. I just looked at one I used to trade there. Sorry. So here's a list. Walter Energy, Dry Ships. Oh, so it looks like there was a lot of option volume in the shipping industry today. You've got Dry Ships in here. Uh, Diana Shipping. Let's see. Is there another one that I recognize? No? Okay. There might be someone on the other page. So there's 44 there that have that. So you can screen by the large increase in percent current option volume, Todd. You can screen specifically for stocks that have hit a new 52-week high. Just use that percent of 52-week range to be greater than 100, um, or the stock change today. Now, in addition to that, when you first log on to your trial account or your subscription account, when you first log on to your account and you're on the main home tab, remember down at the bottom we have the market activity pods that you can select. Uh, so I have some things here, basic ones for earnings announced today and my total ETFs, gainers, and losers. But some of the other pods I can select to view here are exactly what you were looking for, the stocks that have hit the new 52-week highs. So I'll just add that pod. And I can look for top uh, stock gainers, for example, as well. So here's the top stock gainers. Now, it just gives you a basic list in this pod here um, on, the, on the main homepage, Todd. But if I wanted to see view all the new 52-week highs instead of these first three, I'll just click that text link there in that pod. And there we go. We see some of the ones we saw before. Gentex, LXPS, of course. Movado, Walter Energy. We saw that one on our list. Audio Codes. We looked at that one at first. Okay. So this has all the, uh, the different stocks that have hit the new 52-week highs. And you can link to that directly from that main pod. But you can also screen for them in any strategy using that percent of 52-week range field. And then, of course, the monetary stock price change today or the percentage stock change today if you're looking for fast movers. And then if I'm looking for options, um, I'm typically going to use that percentage current option volume field as well. All right, well, we've got about a few minutes left. If you have any other questions, um, just go ahead and send them here. I'm uh, just going to review quickly and wrap up. Uh, I just wanted to mention, of course, the subscription. For those of you that are currently on your 14-day free trial, if you decide to subscribe to Power Options at the end of your 14-day free trial, you will receive an additional 14 days for free. So you'll have use of power options for one full month before you're uh, scheduled to be billed for the service. The 20-minute delay is $59.95 per month, a uh, discounted annual rate of $600 per year. The real-time service, whoop, I'm sorry about that. The real-time service is $79.90 per month, or discounted rate of $800 for the year. The back testing tools are not included on the 20 minutes late or the real time. You can get a three month access to the historical tools for $99.95. But if you're already on the real time service, it's just cheaper to upgrade to the professional level of service. The professional includes everything that was available on the real time um, with unlimited access, excuse me, to the historical suite of tools for $99.99 per month. Okay. Um, upcoming webinar events, typically every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Kurt Frankenberg hosts the Introduction to Radioactive Trading presentations. Um, ignore this one here. It says Wednesday at 9 p.m. Usually at some point Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday during the week at 9 p.m. I'll host the Using the Power Options for the Radioactive Trading Techniques. Every Wednesday at 12 noon, I host an Introduction to Power Options presentation, just an hour walkthrough of using the Power Options tools for search and analysis. And, of course, every Friday at 4.30, I try to host these uh, open discussions. Um, starting in the new year, starting in 2011, we're also probably going to have some presentations in the early to mid-evening, maybe around 6 or 7 o'clock Eastern time, uh, that are going to go along with a, uh, they're going to go along with a theme 
in most cases of different strategies. But I'm also going to be rolling out a uh, specific thing on the Power Options website where it's going to be more of a forum posting and a discussion. Um, essentially post different blogs, um, different ideas that I've had on coaching sessions or customer questions, sort of an FAQ, basic discussion, and uh, sort of a forum page as well. And based on the discussion we have during the week, if there's some events that uh, seem really pressing and people have questions about, then uh, we're going to do a presentation on it during that during the week um, following that. Um, okay. Okay, Nancy asked a question, how far back does the option chain history go? If you're not subscribed to the professional level of service, Nancy, um, or you don't have the uh, historical suite of tools, it will allow you to go back, I believe, 10 days, 8 to 10 days, to scroll previously back on the option chain. Oh, and Wayne, I'm sorry, no, there was actually not a power options for radioactive trading this week. Um, I still have the same one recorded, um, excuse me, I still have the same one recorded uh, from a couple of weeks ago, but I will probably be doing one next week. I just haven't posted it yet on the site. I'll probably post that later on this evening. So there will be one next week. But there was not one this week, and I forget why. There was a specific, a particular reason why, Wayne, and I forget what it was. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, sure, Todd. Todd didn't catch where we first log in. When you first log into your account, um, this is a trial account here, so I have the four steps. And if you're a subscriber, you won't see the, the four steps here. But what you'll see at the bottom is the, the pod menu selection field. So I have, uh, as a default, let me just go to a set default. Let's reload that page there. All right. So on the main default on your... Um, if you haven't made any changes, Todd, what you'll see is you'll have market activity pod here, top stock gainers, power tip. Over on the right, you'll have the upcoming live webinars. And um, below that, you'll have the power watch listing where you can track you know, your watch list for tracking your positions. Now, if I wanted to add what you were looking for, the 52-week highs, we already have the top stock gainers here. Just click the drop-down and they configure your My Home drop-down menu. And let's just click on 52-week highs. And that will add the pod into the next available slot. Now you can drag these pods and minimize them as well. I'm going to move the 52-week highs pod over to the left here. I'm going to minimize this power tip pod. Um, so now I have my 52-week highs, top stock gainers, and market activity. And you can just uh, click and drag them where you want to. So just click the drop-down menu here. And that will give you the pod. And then once you see the, you have the top three gainers there, just click the text link in the bottom of the pod there for uh, view all 52-week highs. There you go, just down there at the bottom. And that will take you to that uh, that uh, page there, excuse me, that market stats page, which shows us the 52-week highs for today. So in addition for searching for it, you can just grab that list at any time, select the new 52-week highs in your pod menu feature, and then you can click the text link there to go to the full page. Or if you wanted to, you could even bookmark this page, Todd, when you're on your account. The, uh, uh, powerop.com slash yearhigh.asp and then you can just go right to that whenever you want it to view the 52 week highs. Okay, let's see, let me click that. All right. Oh, Wayne wants to know, can, yes, Wayne, I'm sorry, let me go, Wayne wanted to know when I talked about the Power Options for Radioactive Trading presentation I last recorded, is it available on Power Options? Yes, it is. Let me go back into the Learning Center menu. So from the main home tab, Wayne, go to Learning Center. Click on webinars. And then you can go into the radioactive trading archive. Um, you have some of the presentations. And actually, it's I apologize, Wayne. It's a couple months ago. So I'll be, we'll be recording next week because this is enough to date. But there's the power options for radioactive traders one from 9 1 2010, uh, just about uh, three months ago, actually. <laughs> so I apologize for that. It's older than I thought it was. But it's usually the same content. I usually go through the same exact steps when I um, do one of those ones. It's just the difference of being live or watching it as the archive. But I'll get a new one up there for you uh, next week, Wayne, so it's not as outdated. But the path there, go to the Home tab first, click on Learning Center. From the Learning Center menu, you want to click on the Webinars link. And then that'll take you to the webinar page. You have the upcoming live webinars. And over on the right, all of our previously recorded webinars. And just click on the category heading if you want to look at the Tools Archive, 
strategies archive or the radioactive trading archive, and you'll be able to watch those at your convenience. All right, you're welcome, Wayne. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about five minutes past. Um, all right, we're about five minutes past our presentation, uh, or <laughs> past 5.30, I'm sorry. You can tell I'm getting a little brain fried here. Um, just remember, if you, have con if you have questions, please feel free to contact us at any time. Send us an email to support at powerup.com. Uh, you can call us, call us toll free at 877-992-7971. Um, or if you live outside the continental US, you can reach us at 302-992-7971. So if you want any clarification of the questions, uh, some of the questions that were asked today or some of the material that were presented, go ahead and send me an email or give me a call. Uh, this presentation was recorded. I did archive it, so I hope to have it up in that archive menu we were looking at maybe on uh, Monday afternoon or Tuesday. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you got a lot of information. And uh, have a great weekend. Have a fantastic weekend. And we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. Good night.